This is in par follow up to the last video. Since we have an aging population, how then do two of the world's more influential faith traditions suggest we treat old people? Let's have a look at that. Here is how my Jewish learning suggests we treat them. Spirituality and the elders, a Jewish perspective. How can we age like Abraham and Sarah? By Jacqueline Droskin. With people generally living longer lives today than in the past, many have sought to articulate a unique spirituality for those facing the questions, challenges and joys that come with old age. In the following piece, the author discusses how we might, might think of a Jewish spirituality of ageing. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 8, we learn that the patriarch Abraham died at age 8, 175, having reached a good ripe old age, old and contented. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 7 to 8, we learn that Moses died at the age of 120 with eyes undimmed and vigor unabated. Both men set out on the transformative journeys at older ages. Abraham was 75 when he left Haran. Moses was 80 when he led the Israelites out of Egypt. Now you'll find an argument about whether these ages in the in the Tanakh or Old Testament, as Christians like I call that, are symbolic or not. But that's really beside the point for this, as a point of the article that the lady is writing is about how we should deal with treating people with dignity as we age, which is what I'm interested in. Aging in Judaism, there are many references to the decline and challenges of growing old in Jewish texts, but these references clearly teach us that there is good in old age, that there is health and strength. These texts point to a spirituality of Jewish aging. Can growing older be a time when we do not end our journeys but begin them and if we do what is the journey that allows us to obtain a good old age to retain vitality embark on the journey when we speak or write of spirituality the word itself invokes many shades of meaning ask a group of people what the word means to them and you'll receive many different answers of course if you ask me i'll give you one answer as a catholic um, if i go and ask you, other family members, even though they, some of them are Catholic, they'll give me different, slightly different answers based on their own life experiences and perspectives, although there'll be some commonality. For some, spirituality means connection to God. For others, the word implies a connection to some force greater than themselves, the universe, nature. An essence that underlies in many definitions is a sense of connection that goes behind on one sense of self. That's one point I'd, I'd probably give you as an answer. Older people are beyond our sense of self. They precede us. And if we live long enough, we will precede those behind us as well. We are part of a continuity. For Jews, this sense may be captured in Abraham Herschel's well-known phrase, radical amazement. To look at the world in this manner is to have a spiritual experience. The deeper context of Herschel's phrase implies a conventional relationship between God and humankind are always rooted in a sacred connection. Both Abraham and Moses hear God's call. Abraham is told, go forth from your native land and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Moses stops to regard the wondrous sight of the burning bush. Exodus chapter 3, verse 3. And here's God called Moses. Moses is answering, here I am. Our ancestors began their journeys as older men. And for me, as a Catholic, the patriarchs are still part of my ancestry, as we view them as a tradition we follow on from. Abraham hears God tell him to go forth. Moses hears God calling his name. In beginning a spiritual journey at an older age, both Abraham and Moses have accumulated multiple life experiences. But notice that they don't; they are not regarded as useless or irrelevant to society their experience is regarded as useful and valuable they have passed through childhood and adolescence they have were married they have been part of a community and family both men hear god's commanding voice being older is abraham more open to and willing to set forth on a radically new path being older is moses more sensitive has he become quieter with himself that he can step and stop and look in here does bring, reaching an older age bring it with it a unique ability to explore spirituality? 
commanded not to feel old. There is a, a phrase attributed to the Hasidic master, Reb Nachman of Breslov, or perhaps it is a variation of a theme. Jews are forbidden to feel old. It takes courage to face the limits of life and the losses that invariably come with it. But if Reb Nachman forbids Jews to feel old, then he is using commanding language of Sinai. That is an option, an option but a must. Abraham and Moses challenge common notions of growing old. Contrary to coming of age as young men, they come of age as old men. Abraham dies content. Moses dies with undimmed. Eyes undimmed with the ability to see and understand things clearly and with vigour, with vitality, by following God's call. Both men have begun beyond the limits of their expected routines. They are able to venture into the unknown. They become leaders, transforming themselves and others in the process. As one grows older, our tradition offers this model. While being in a conventional relationship with God is what makes us Jewish, well, I'll leave that part aside because, of course, I am not Jewish. But the writer talks about the relationship reformed for a Jewish person at their bar, a bar mitzvah. For me, that would be at my baptism, a confirmation. It's a similar spiritual transformation, of course. But this final section, Honouring Our Elders, in Barakoth, a book of the Talmud, there's a tractate that deals with the question, how far does the honour of parents extend? In this tractate comes a story of Dama the heathen, um, Baba Metza, and it gives you a reference if you want to find this in the, the Talmud, although I warn you, the Talmud is a fantastically large book. There are two brief versions in which Dama is offered a large sum of money for the representative sages of the Jewish community, first for merchandise, and secondly, for jewels for the effort, especially priestly birthplace. In order to make the deal, Dama must awaken his father, for the key is lying beneath his father's pillow. This Dama refuses to do. Disturbing his father's rest is unacceptable. He places a higher value on honouring his father than on financial profit. <laughs> Later on in this story, Dama is rewarded by God. Notice that God orders Dama for placing a higher value on order, honouring his father than on financial profit, which therefore is more pleasing to God. A red heifer is born to his flock. Now, for those not familiar with it, um, a red heifer has a particular symbolic and um, meaning in Judaism and was, as the article points out in the next line, was necessary for the priests of the temple for purification purposes, that whole subject is endlessly complicated, and there are actually attempts to rebreed with such heifers going on um, in the world now. The tractate ends with an ethical precept articulated by Rabbi Anina. To our modern ears, the climax is surprising and counterintuitive. The story is not about a heathenist treatment of his old father as exemplary, exemplary enough to be rewarded by God. The story is teaching us how to fulfill this obligation. The rabbi tells us the great honor is due an elder, while emphasizing that one who is not commanded the law, follow the law is rewarded. Remember that the bloke doing this is a heathen. He's not under the law of Judaism, but he's still re rewarded. But the lesson is being directed towards the Jewish people in the Talmud. How much greater the reward for someone within the law for following the law. For following the law means that we have answered a call and are in a sacred relationship. In the Garden of Eden, there is no death, there is no old age, Genesis 3. Limits are restricted to only one rule, not to eat of the fruit of the two trees. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this because I think most of us are reasonably familiar with the Garden of Eden and the basic message. But as a Catholic, I'll switch to this. Catholic social thought, promoting human dignity through family, business, social, society and politics. The elderly, the roots of our society. Every year on the third Sunday of June, the Catholic Bishops Conference of England and Wales invites people to celebrate a day for life. Its primary purpose, as outlined by St. John Paul II, Evangelum Vitae, is to foster individual consciences in families, in the church, and in civil society, a recognition of the meaning of value of human life at every stage and in every condition. Building on last year's theme of care at the end of life, 
This year, the bishops are inviting the faithful to reflect on protecting and valuing old age. This post was first published by the tablet and was republished by kind permission. Parado this focus on old age is both a global and ecclesiastical concern. There are now more than 1 billion people aged 60 or over living in our world. I suppose, according to certain pseudo-historians, we should find all of those flipping annoying. A number expected to double by 2050. The face of humanity is aging. Longevity, which was once considered a blessing, has fallen prey to a throwaway culture. From the treatment of the elderly during the pandemic and the disproportionate effect COVID had on them, the health and social care crisis, the dementia time bomb, the threat of assisted suicide legislation, the breakdown of extended families, weakening of familial support and increased isolation, every day we see numerous attacks upon the gift of a long life. Paradoxically, the place and worth of older persons in our society is called into question with tragic consequences. Christians are called to pull back against this manifestation of the throwaway culture in which we find ourselves. And that's what I was brought up to believe. Old people are not something you can throw away or dispose of because they've aged and perhaps they find it a bit awkward to get around the house or they might be a bit querulous, a bit grumpy, or they might drive you up the wall a bit because they have some minor demands. We were probably quite annoying when we were age five and six and being annoying because we couldn't eat, wouldn't eat our vegetables. I find any suggestion that old people are disposable exceptionally offensive. It is to dis dismiss the humanity of a large percentage of human beings. And I will rebut forcibly any such suggestions presented by anyone. It is obnoxious. It is the talk of, well, I'll be quite frank, it is evil. It's a word I rarely use direct, in such a direct manner, but the stench of evil radiates off such talk.